When you think of ACC Coastal title contenders, you may be thinking of teams like Miami, North Carolina, Virginia Tech, maybe even Virginia, the reigning champions from last year. But you should be thinking about Pittsburgh, a team whose talent and schedule lines up for them to have maybe the best season yet under Pat Narduzzi. Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert, the best kept secret in all of college football. Today, bringing you our 2020 Pittsburgh Panthers college football predictions. As always, make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos as we continue to predict every team in the ACC as well as every other Power 5 team. And also check out everything in our description below where you can get exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, and everything on our social media pages over on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. So the Panthers went 8-5 and five last year, including a thrilling win over Eastern Michigan in the Quick Lane Bowl. And they now return 15 starters from last year's squad. That includes 8 on the defensive side of the ball which is certainly going to be the strength for Pittsburgh this season. Listen to these numbers, guys. Not only did Pittsburgh just allow 22.5 points per game last year, which is a great number in and of itself, they ranked first nationally in sacks per game, almost four sacks per game, 51 sacks total on the year. They ranked ninth in tackles for a loss per game. They ranked 15th in total defense on the year, and they ranked 12th in the nation in rushing defense, allowing just 108.5 rushing yards per game. So all of those amazing stats that Pittsburgh had last year, and now they return basically almost all of their defense from last year's squad. They're going to be led by Paris Ford and DeMar Hamlin in the secondary, and then you've got Jalen Twyman, who led the team with 10 and a half sacks last year, bolstering that defensive line. So across the board, the Panthers are set defensively, and that could be the difference maker in a lot of these crucial ACC conference games. When you look at Pittsburgh's offense, it's not as electric and not as exciting as their defense. They only, they only score 21.2 points per game. And we all know the key for Pittsburgh is getting the best play out of their quarterback in Kenny Pickett. There were times last year that he looked great, such as the win over Eastern Michigan, the Quick Lane Bowl, and then there were plenty of other times where he did not look so great. You've got to get better consistency out of Pickett, who did throw for over 3,000 yards, but had just 13 touchdowns to 9 interceptions. He is lucky he does return his running back in A.J. Davis, who had 530 yards last year, and Taysier Mack does return to lead the wide receiver core after they lose their top receiver in Maurice French. So the pieces are in place for Pat Narduzzi to get Pittsburgh back to the ACC title game. Remember, they were there just as recently as 2018. So the talent is there to get them back. The schedule lines up to get them back. But of course, you heard us mention those coastal contenders, and three of which, North Carolina, Virginia, and Miami, all fall on the road for the Panthers. But we'll get to those soon. We have to start with Miami, Ohio. Certainly a game that Pittsburgh cannot afford to overlook. This is a Red Hawks team that won the MAC last year. They ended up winning the MAC and fell to Louisiana in their bowl game. But nonetheless, they do return a very talented quarterback in Brett Gabbert. They return 16 starters overall. And this is a team that will be one of the better teams yet again in the MAC. So Pittsburgh can't afford to overlook them, but with very high expectations, the game being at home, we give them a win over the Red Hawks, and we give them the win over Marshall too. Certainly a game that I think will be more difficult than the Miami-Ohio game. This is a Marshall team, guys, that was just up and down last year. They were very inconsistent. Yes, they went 8-5, and five, uh, but they could not really string together consistent wins across the board. It was very uncharacteristic of the Thundering Herd and Doc Holliday. They only returned four starters defensively, and I just think that this is a game where Kenny Pickett does shine a little bit. They take advantage of a weaker Marshall defense. And they're 3-0 because we give them a win over Richmond as well. 
They then come into ACC play, guys. So right at the end of September, we jump right into it with a game against Duke. And last year, Pittsburgh was lucky to survive the Blue Devils, winning that game 33-30, scoring the game-winning touchdown with 38 seconds left after blowing a 26-3 lead. So they were in control early in that game and allowed David Cutcliffe and his Blue Devils to come back before finally bailing themselves out with less than a minute left. Now Chase Bryce, the transfer quarterback from Clemson, steps in at the helm for David Cutcliffe and Duke. And that's going to be the key for the Blue Devils this year, is we know how great David Cutcliffe is at you know producing quarterbacks, at creating great QBs. He did it at Ole Miss. He's done it at Duke. He's done it across the board wherever he's been. Can he do that in year one with Chase Bryce? But I look at this key number here, it's not whether or not Duke can put up points against Pittsburgh. It's whether or not Duke can stop Pittsburgh from scoring points. They allowed 180.6 rushing yards per game last year. This game is at home. You don't necessarily get a great game out of Kenny Pickett in this one, but you do get a good game out of A.J. Davis in this one. Pittsburgh gets the win over Duke, and I don't think it's nearly as close as it was last year. They then go on the road to take on Miami. Right here, guys, this is one of those games that will greatly affect the ACC Coastal standings. This is a game that could make or break Miami's chances of getting into the championship game or Pittsburgh's chances. Because we said it's wide open, but you have a lot of contenders that are going to beat up on one another to make it very chaotic at season's end. This is one of those games. Last year, Pittsburgh lost to Miami 16-12 at home. They allowed the game-winning touchdown to Miami with 58 seconds left. Now you have a Miami team that is very, very talented. At least they should be. A Miami team that brings in a transfer quarterback in De'Eric King over from Houston. And a defense that was 13th in the nation in total defense last year. And will have a brutal defensive line led by Gregory Rousseau. Now we all know the the... Bad news for Miami last year, and the reason they struggled so much was, yes, some poor coaching decisions uh, and a couple of, among other things, but you look at their offensive line. That was a major reason that they could never get anything going. Inconsistent QB play, poor offensive line play, which means you would think that with that being the case, that Pittsburgh's fantastic defensive line is going to have a field day against this Miami offensive line. That's not the case. That's not the case. Pittsburgh only had two sacks versus Miami's offensive line last year. And that Hurricanes O-line is going to be a lot better this year. Hurricanes have home field advantage, so they protect their quarterback better. They have a better quarterback under center. They have better consistent quarterback play. The defense remains just as good. The Hurricanes bounce back in a big way in year two under Manny Diaz. And I believe the Panthers fall on the road at Miami. First loss of the year, they are 4-1. and They get their bye week at a perfect time, going into a huge home game against Notre Dame. Now, of course, this is not a game that will affect Pittsburgh in the conference standings, so win or lose this game, it does not help them in their quest of making the ACC title game. And this is a major trap game, guys, for the Fighting Irish. This is a scary, scary game, because we know Pittsburgh's got the talent to win. We know they have the talent to upset Notre Dame in this one. And they've got the game at home, and they're coming off a bye week. And you look at this Notre Dame squad here, the biggest concern I have for them is their pass catchers. Who's Ian Book going to throw to? You've got one of the greatest quarterbacks in the country right now. You've got a fantastic offensive line, but it's not going to matter if he doesn't have anyone to throw to. So he's going to have to build up chemistry there. You've got a defense here for Notre Dame that allows just 17.9 points per game and has a very strong back seven. Secondary should be very solid. Linebacking core should be very solid. I look at this, it comes down to who has the defensive edge here, and I'm actually going to give the edge to Notre Dame. I don't think Kenny Pickett's the quarterback that's going to be able to pick apart Notre Dame's defense and win this game solely through the air because they're not going to be able to win the game on the ground, guys. They're just not. Which means Kenny Pickett's going to have to step up, and I don't think he's able to do it against this Notre Dame secondary. The Fighting Irish come in and squeak by the Panthers. I'm talking razor-thin margin. This game's decided by a touchdown or less, but it's going to go in favor of the Fighting Irish. We give Pittsburgh their second straight loss coming out of the bye week. But they bounce back, though, with a quick win over Georgia Tech. And I really don't think this one takes much explanation. 
They beat the Yellow Jackets by 10 points last year on the road. Sure, it wasn't by a lot, considering how bad Georgia Tech was last year. And yes, we know Georgia Tech returns a lot of talent. They returned 17 starters, including 10 on offense. But they're still in the midst of a major rebuilding process under Jeff Collins. And I don't think Pittsburgh's going to allow them to lose this game at home. They defeat the Yellow Jackets handily, angrily, after a heartbreaking defeat in Notre Dame. They come on the road now to Florida State on Halloween. Florida State is kicking off a brand new era for them, the Mike Norvell era, coming over from Memphis. And like Miami, the biggest thing for Florida State last, last year was inconsistent quarterback play and a terrible offensive line. They still managed to make a bowl game before losing to Arizona State, but if they can correct those things, you could see Florida State get back to relevancy, could get back to maybe at least eight wins this year and then slowly but surely build back up to being in that national powerhouse we were so used to seeing. This game, being down in Tallahassee, I think, like Miami, Florida State fixes a lot of the problems they had last year. They've got great leadership in Mike Norvell. They've got a great offensive mind in Mike Norvell, and they do return 10 starters on, de on defense. So I look at all those things combined, plus home field advantage. Whether fans are there or not, to me, does not matter. Pittsburgh drops this game to the Seminoles. So they're sitting here now with four, five wins, excuse me. They're five and three going into a huge game against Virginia Tech. But remember, one of those losses we have them pegged to lose is a non-conference game. So their hopes of an ACC Coastal title are not done, depending on how the rest of their competition fares. And one of their major rivals this year, one of their major competitions, is going to be Virginia Tech, a team that's so experienced. 19 returning starters from last year's squad. Yes, we know they lose Bud Foster as defensive coordinator. When you lose a legend like that, you do question how they bounce back. But I do think Justin Hamilton does a great job of stepping in. He understands the culture. He understands the system. But he's not going to have enough to defeat Pittsburgh. Yes, we know that Pittsburgh lost to the Hokies 28 to nothing last year. We do know that. All the more reason that the Panthers are going to be more angry. They're going to want revenge over the Hokies at home Coming off a loss here to Florida State, one that I do think is relatively close, and I think that Hendon Hooker has a pretty rough game offensively. I think this is a game, uh, among some others we're going to mention, that I think Pittsburgh's defensive line flexes their muscles a little bit. They make him uncomfortable. They don't allow him to extend plays with his legs. Pittsburgh wins this game at home. A huge one to keep their coastal hopes alive, but we do have them falling to North Carolina the week after. And that could be the dagger in their... Coastal hopes. North Carolina is the heavy favorite as our whiteboard is trying. Did not show its disappointment after that loss there. But North Carolina, of course, is the heavy favorite going into the Coastal this year. And rightfully so. They're 7-6 from 2019, but all six losses by just one possession. And now return basically everybody from that squad. Including offensively, led by Sam Howe. I think this is a game where Pittsburgh secondary struggles. I think many secondaries will struggle facing Sam Howell. You've got Michael Carter at running back. You've got Daz Newsome at wide receiver. I think this is a very, very difficult game for Pittsburgh's defense to handle. If it was at home, you might give them that slight edge, make it a little closer. But I think North Carolina is going to be the team to beat this year. They lose here, but we're going to make sure they close out the win or the season with two wins in ACC conference play. They close out 2020 with wins over Virginia and wins over Syracuse. You look at the Virginia game, they lost to the Cavaliers, who ultimately won the Coastal last year, lost to them 30-14 to in the season opener. Yeah, we know it's on the road for Pittsburgh, but I think you could see a 30-14 to game, but this time in favor of the Panthers, because Virginia lost just about everything they had offensively, and that was Bryce Perkins. Bryce Perkins did everything for them, was the major reason that they made the ACC championship, the major reason they made the Orange Bowl last year and stayed in that Orange Bowl, I should add. But now he is gone. They've got to find better quarterback play, but whoever it is is not going to be up to par, up to the level of Bryce Perkins. Pittsburgh gets the win here. I think they flex their muscles defensively, similar to they do against Virginia Tech. And then Syracuse last year, like Florida State, like Miami, Syracuse has to fix their offensive line as it was one of the worst in the country last year. And Pittsburgh showed that, getting nine sacks against the Orange in 2019. 
Tommy DeVito, as a matter of fact, was the most sacked quarterback in the nation. And in that game, with nine sacks, Pittsburgh ended up defeating the Orange 27-20 in the Carrier Dome. Now they get to host this game at home in the season finale. It's senior night. They have a chance to capture an eight-win season, and I think they do just that. Syracuse improves, but not nearly enough to come on the road and get revenge over the Panthers, meaning that Pat Narduzzi's squad finishes the season at 8-4. and four. Now again, many people think that the Panthers could go on to win 10 games in 2020. And when you look at the schedule, it's not entirely far-fetched. You have these four losses here. Maybe they do snag an upset against Notre Dame. I think that's a trendy upset pick for some. And I was going back and forth on it, but I could not bring myself to pick against the Fighting Irish, a team that I do think will be in the college football playoff hunt for the majority of the season, at least until their Clemson matchup in November. You look at that loss there. You look at one of the losses we have all coming on the road. I think your most winnable game is the road game against Florida State. Maybe the Panthers are able to do that to then capture their 10-win season. But regardless, 8-4 in 2020 is an improvement from last year as they went 7-5 in the regular season. And an 8-4 season means that Pittsburgh goes to a very solid bowl game. And if they win that, they will capture their first 9-win season since 2 2009. So guys, thank you so much for watching us here at the Gridiron Expert on YouTube. Make sure to continue to like, comment, subscribe, and share these videos as we continue to predict every single Power 5 team. Check out everything down in the description below for exclusive content on our website, thegridironexpert.com, and all of our social media pages over on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And once again, as always, thank you so much for watching. And we'll see you next time right here on the Gridiron Expert.